What's up, everybody? This is Rob Shack. So today we're gonna be doing another one of my rivals series in Grand Turismo 3. Last week we did the or two weeks ago we did the Corvette and the uh, Viper. Today we're doing the Denso Sard Supra GT and the Castrol Tom's Supra JGTC. They're both JGTC. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Help me get to a thousand subs. Y'all are awesome, and thank you guys so so much for the support. So what y'all are, if you're new to the channel, what I'm doing here is I am doing some rivalries in Grand Theft 3 because I noticed when I made this, when I played through this game, they basically, the way that Polyphony kind of passed on not having that many cars in the game was that they essentially put rivals of certain cars all over the place so that you actually had good races even though you had a, not a very many, not a high selection of cars. I don't really care because the game looks beautiful and I would never change it for the world except for add the Stratos. But in this game, uh, they just basically had rival cars, and so last week, or two weeks ago, I did the Viper and the um, Corvette, and so this is going to be episode two. I'm going to change it up a little bit from last time. What I'm going to do is, instead of doing an AI race where I just kind of commentate over it, I'm going to actually drive a car in a race with these two cars in it, and then race against them, so you can kind of make, I can do stupid things in the video, but also... It makes it, I like seeing the display and all that stuff. It's just more iconic for Grand Turismo 3 to have the orange and all that stuff. Last week's, or two weeks ago's video just didn't have any of that. It was just kind of like a normal video. And also the cars didn't mess up, but it's because they're not going to. It was the two, the Viper, the Corvette don't mess up. But the Supras will, so that'll be a fun one. Um, we'll get to that at the end of the video. Y'all can check that out or just fast forward through this part if you're not interested in this. Because what I'm doing now is I'm driving the Castro Tom Supra on complex stream i'm gonna do the same thing with the sard we're gonna compare lap times see how we do here uh, i'll commentate as i'm driving here what i like about this car uh but i'll get to that in a second so yeah this is what we're gonna do and at the end of the video i will do a max speed test of each so that i can kind of put my money where my mouth is with what i've described in the beginning of the video and if i'm wrong because this is just off of the cusp here then we'll talk about it <laughs> or y'all can just comment on it in the, in the thing below also let me know what which one of these two cars you like more do you like the castro toms or the denzo sard i like them both but i'll kind of give my opinions of each in a second so we're starting with the uh, castro tom supra i made it a long way without actually talking about this so sorry about the intro there yeah Castro Tom Supra, iconic car in my mind. Uh, when I think of Gran Turismo, I think of the Castro Tom Supra or some sort of uh, variant of this car because they didn't have it licensed, licensed until I think three. In Gran Turismo one, they had the Castro Supra GT. Looked almost exactly the same because the car looked the same over all the years. I mean, it wasn't like they made it up. They use a very similar livery all the way from like 95 to like 01. They pretty much used the same type of car um, so it's not like it was a lie, it's just obviously they're going to change stuff to make it look more generic, but it was the Castro Supra GT back in 1, they had the Castro Supra GT in 2, they had I think the Castro Tom Supra also was in 2, but it was the 99 version, this is the 2000 version, looks almost the exact same. Um, they also did that with the Sard too by the way, they had the Sard GT in the, uh, in GT2 and it was the 99 version and then they had the 2000 version in this game. They look pretty much the exact same but technically they're not the exact same car. So that's why when you search on the Grand Turismo Wiki you can find the Castro Supra GT from 99 and the Denso Sard Supra GT from 99 and then 2000 versions as well. Um, the iconicness nature of this Castro Tom Supra though is like it's just uncanny. People definitely recognize this car. It's gotten so much more popularity only because of Gran Turismo like I had never heard of this car before I started playing Gran Turismo and then I'm like oh my gosh it's like a real car and it's awesome and it looks great it's beautiful good sound design in this game the menacing sound of the Supras in this game are so good they carried over from two they did a good job so why if it ain't broke don't fix it the car sounds beautiful I'm noticing as I drive through with this car that it's handling is so good uh, I think you'll come to find later. The Sard Supra does not have the same handling as the Castro Tom Supra. The Castro Tom Supra is very gripped, very planted on the course, on the tarmac. It stays very, very, uh, has very, very good handling. I mean, it's a Supra, so it's not gonna have the best handling, because Supras are pretty out of control. They're powerful, and they you can see that in the way they drive. But um, the Castro Toms can handle a lot better. It still slides out a little bit. You can see that on some of these corners as I try to take them quick 
You can definitely take the corners much faster with the uh, Castro Toms, though. The Sarge, you'll see later, is a lot more slidey on the course. It's a lot more powerful, though. This Castro Toms, definitely you'll see it kind of slow down as it gets higher in the gears. It doesn't have the same punch when you get higher in speeds. But I think the uh, Castro Tom Super is technically a little bit quicker off the line in, in the first and the low gears. You'll notice that it just, it can really fly when you're in the low gears. I mean, that's also true of the AI's Castro Tom Super, and we'll get to that later in the video. I do think that the uh, Castro Tom's is the grippier of the two, a little bit slower, but it has its moments where it's quicker. Certain courses, certain tarmacs is gonna it's gonna totally thrive, but uh, and it, but you can and you can also take it, you can you know be more aggressive with this car. It can handle a little bit better, so you can kind of push it a little bit more compared to the Sard. If you can handle the Sard better, you'll see later. The Sard is, well, if you can handle it, it's more it'll you can, it'll do a better lap time usually with the Sard compared to the Supra. If you're more of a seasoned Gran Turismo driver, I'm like a moderate. I'll say that I'm like a moderate in terms of seasonedness. Like I'm. I'm decent at this game. I can drive a clean lap. I tend to have more fun slamming the AI, but I'm all right. And so I think with me, you'll see like, I'll have a couple corners with the Star where I'll do really good, but with the Castro Toms, it's just an easier car to handle. Um, in terms of sound, I mean, obviously they sound the exact same. So I think the uh, Castro Toms is the safer car. It looks good. Honestly, the Sard looks good too, but I think the cash roll looks a little bit better. We'll get to the Sard's appearance, and I'll say more about that there. But I think this is good enough. Um, I'll call my 4.15 lap time here, and we'll switch over to the Sard. All right, so now we are on to the Denso Sard Supra GT. Odd thing to note here is that in Gran Turismo 2, the, I think I said this already, but the, the cash roll Tom Supra was also named GT in Gran Turismo 2. But only in, in 3, only the Sard is named GT. So that's kind of weird. I don't really know why they did that. Because if they're named GT, they're named GT. But they didn't really go off of that. So that's a little bit weird. But anyway, uh, we're using the Sard Super now. I apparently quit out last time too quickly. So the lap time of my Castro Tom Super didn't save. But it was a 4.15. So we'll see if I can beat that with the Sard. The Sard, you'll notice, is a little bit slower in the low gears and it kind of maintains its power in the higher gears, so that can kind of be a perk or a curse, if you will. Either way, it can kind of help or hurt you. Um, you'll notice that, again, it looks beautiful. Car looks amazing. Very uh, iconic design, because, you know, the Sard was in two as well, and it's you, they've kept the Sard and the Castro Toms in, like, every Gran Turismo ever, except for Sport, I think, doesn't have these two cars. Don't quote me on that, though, because I've never really played Sport. Um, and there's so many updates in that game, so, you know, yeah. Um, but you'll notice as I go through these corners, yeah, the Sard is very powerful, uh, more, a little bit more aggressive on the corners, doesn't grip the same way as the Sard, uh, Castro Toms, so that's kind of one of those things where you'll notice that. It doesn't seem to break as well, you can't break through a corner like you can with the Castro Tom Supra. I don't even know if that's legit, I don't know if that you're supposed to do that, I feel like that seems like a little bit arcadey. I feel like that's not what professional racers would ever admit to. But it seems like with the Sard, you cannot break. The Sard seems more like a real life race car of a Supra. It seems like it has that like immense power that a Supra can bring. The crazy power, they're a little bit more wild in its handling. But the if, if you can handle it, you can be really, really good with the Sard. The Castro Tom seems more like an almost like an arcadey like version of a Supra race car. So you have the like easy control the grip of the Castro Toms and the Sard is a little bit more slidey. It'll kind of, you have to kind of break early and then accelerate through the corners, which I think is the way you're supposed to race in real life. So I guess that that point will go to the Sard for sure. Um, the Sard just seems really powerful. You know, just, again, this is, these are, these are microscopic changes here. It's not like it's like noticeable. It's not like you're driving like a Daihatsu compared to a Supra, you know, they're both very fast. It's just like, when I watch it rev up compared to the Castro Toms, it seems like the Sard is just doing a better, like, it just seems to be more efficient with its power. Um, but then again, that's only in the the higher gears. I think in the lower gears, it's kind of the opposite, where it spins the tires, it's a little bit less efficient with the power. And that's why the Castro Toms can kind of fly off the line really quick, as opposed to the Sard not really being able to do that as well. 
Um, I think the Supra looks a little bit better, obviously. I think they sound exactly the same. There's really not much of a difference. I think the Sard has a cool design, but I think that I would give it a little bit to the Castro Toms. Um, and I think in terms of power, you're going to have the Sard, because most courses in this game are not like tight, technical city courses. You get that more in four. So I may have to do this head to head again in four, and it'll probably be, go more towards the uh, Castro Tom or to the Sard. But um, I think in this game, you have a lot more power, so that as a result of the power, you're going to favor the Sard on, you know, courses like, you know, maybe Grand Valley Speedway would favor the Sard, but any sort of tight technical course will be more for the Castro Toms. Depends on where you're racing, basically. I think the Castro Toms can hug the tarmac a little bit better. The Sard is a little bit more, it tends to be a little bit more aggressive. It'll be a little bit more off the reins. It'll be harder to control. You can kind of feel that with the way that it bounces around the course and it kind of slides through corners. You have to brake a lot earlier and then kind of push, accelerate through the course, through the corner, as opposed to with the Supra where you can kind of brake late, brake into the corner and then get back under control really quickly. The Sard doesn't really let you do that. It'll kind of start to slide out when you try to accelerate through the corner if you brake late. If you brake early, you'll be fine with this car. And so I think that's the type of thing where if you're going to want to see how you do better with each one, I would recommend starting with the Castro Toms and then get used to that and then try to use the Sard. If you can't handle the Sard, that's fine. It doesn't mean you're not a good Gran Turismo driver. You know, again, I think I'm like a novice, like a novice to moderate in this game and I can handle the Sard pretty well. But yeah, even with like, you'll notice that it tries to slide out a lot more. That's something that's just true with the Sard. Um, I still think it's fantastic though. I mean, come on, these cars are great. You know, you can't, you can't hate on the, uh, Sard at all. I'm not hey, not at all. It's a beautiful car. Very good. Very fast. I think it. if you can get used to it, it's way better. Um, but I think that's that same thing where, see, I ran, did a 417 there because it's just less efficient. It's hard. I mean, you have to be focused to make it. But you could you could definitely beat the Castro Toms pretty, pretty handily with this car if you can handle what it's, you know, what it's capable of. If you get used to it, it would be really good. I think that's just kind of how a lot of the cars in this game work is they have like one of them is the safer option and one of them is the more aggressive one and if you can use to, get used to the aggressive one then you're going to be fine but uh in the meantime i think the uh Castro toms is a little safer option sard is really powerful though like it's it's powerful man it's really good and the supra is as a whole just a wild car but it's so freaking great i'm not like wild is a good thing like i'm not saying it's bad i think it's a really really good car and i think it's a lot of fun to kind of get used to handling these cars where they and I don't even know if this is true or not, but it seems like the Sarge brakes are a little worse. I'm not sure if that's just me. It just seems like I have to brake really, really, really early compared to the Castro Toms. Like, I just did the little lap with the Castro Toms, and it seemed like it was pretty, uh, you could brake late. With this car, you really can't brake late. Like, if you brake late, you're kind of screwed on any corner. So that's just another thing where, I, and you know, going back to what I've been saying all this time, I think the Castro is the safer option. The Sarge is the more aggressive, powerful, better rewarding if you can handle it car, but... If you make a mistake with the Denso Sard, it'll cost you. It's gonna cost you a little bit more than it would with the Castro Toms, because the Castro Toms is a little bit more, a um, little bit grippier and it stays under control. I mean, you can see just in my dash cam how many times do I make a turn and it starts. You see a bunch of smoke in the background. That's just kind of what the Sard is gonna do. Um, and then it kind of—it seems like the tires kind of lock up a little bit too. So I would give, in terms of me driving it. I'm going to give it to the Castro Toms. Again, we're going to have a lot more fun with this in this little thing. I'm going to go and do an AI race, and we'll kind of talk about how the AI handle each one. So that's going to be a little bit of a fun part. So we'll get to that right now. Thank you all for watching this part. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If this is boring, again, I'll take out all this crap, and I'll just do an AI race or something like that. But I like to kind of talk about it, and I want me to drive them too, which is why I do that. So... Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, I'm going to do a race now on the All Japan GT Championship. I will be using... I'll probably just use an NSX or something like that. I want to not have me be driving one of the two cars because even though I prefer the um, Casual Toms, I want to not be driving one of them because I don't think that's fair. So I'm just going to drive another JGTC car and we're going to watch them race and see how they do. So here we go. Alright, what's up everybody? Back again. I, well, 
y'all I've already cut it so y'all won't notice. But yeah, so I am doing a race where now I'm gonna have the Denzo Sard and the Castle Tom Supra as AIs race each other. This is a hilarious race. I was not expecting it to be this good. It was perfect too that they both started in fourth and fifth, so then you get to see how the AI as each one of them pass. Because it's pretty funny, they they don't do that very well. And there's this whole thing where the cars slide on that first corner and they both do it, so you know, you got that. This race was actually really funny, and you'll see as I get through it, I'll edit out the boring parts, but we're going to just show all the good spins between these two. They do a lot, so it's going to be hilarious. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to comment much on it, but I'll try to. It's just hilarious. They they totally uh, they have a good time, and I'm driving the Arda, obviously. You can tell. And then uh, they both are pretty wild on lots of corners but the you'll see that you'll it's a pretty obvious choice of which one of them the ai can handle better and you'll see it it's going to be right up here yep there you have it everybody is freaking out on this corner so it wasn't just the sard literally everybody spun out except for well the supra technically did it but he just drove off the road but the mugen and nsx did fine that's it so the Sard spun out there. It was pretty hilarious. So did the Loctite. So did the Pennzoil. Then, uh, yeah, you're going to see that this is not going well for the Sard. And it is not going to get any better for the Sard. This whole race. So to make it very clear which AI handles worse, the AI seem to agree with me that the Sard is harder to control because they totally cannot handle this car they spin out a lot it's gonna be hilarious it's gonna be a great race the supra does well but the supra spins the supra will spin it's just not nearly as often as the sard the sard really gets destroyed this round and maybe this is just like a bad round for the sard but i've done this race like a lot of times you can check on my channel there's a lot of all japan gt championships the sard spins more than the supra the, the than the castrol it's just true like it happens every race. I don't think the Sard has ever beaten the soup Casual Tom Supra in this race, ever. I don't think it's ever happened, honestly, I don't. Because the the Casual Tom Supra just stays under control better. Like, you'll see it. The grip of the Sard is very apparent. It does not handle very well, and it will lose control on corners a lot. And that's why, right now, the Sard is still battling the Loctite Zexel Skyline when the Supra is actually pretty close to me in the NSX, the other NSX. It's it's pretty hilarious. I didn't expect it. Um, we'll see what happens, though. I mean, everybody has their moments, but yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty clear who handles worse of the two. I mean, you see it just in the way they both take that corner. And I mean, like, here we go again. The Sard is breaking, spinning out, and he's still with the Loctite. The Nismo is, is pretty terrible, but I like the Nismo. But um, yeah, this is this is pretty funny. Um, it's a lot of good stuff in this one, so I'll cut out some of it because I mean there are parts where it's not as interesting. But for now, I mean this is this is not going to get much better for the lock the Sard. Uh, eventually, I think he passes the Loctite, but you know when they keep spinning out in the same corner, it's it's causing some issues for the uh, for the for the Sard here. But it's hilarious. Um, yeah, the, they're both great, but yeah, the AI kind of agrees with me on this one, and that is that they they have a harder time controlling the Sard. Now, the Sard, I do think, is faster, and if the Sard didn't spin out, he would do a better lap than the Castro Toms, but now it's all thrown off because the thing is, now the Sard's tires are wearing more unevenly than the Supra's, so as a result, you're going to start to see... The Sard might have one lap where he does better than the Castro Toms, but it's going to start to be very less... It's going to be lower in possibility now. Um, he is now officially past the Loctite, but we'll see how long that lasts. While well, everyone's normal, I'm just going to show the Pennzoil spinning, because, you know, why not? But if the Loctite spins here again, then it's still going to be a battle, but I, I don't remember because obviously I was trying to control my car during the race, but it looks like he is going to spin again. And I mean, this type of thing is not going to go well for the Sard, because see, like, those XL, like, he's not getting away from his XL, and the Supra, Castro Toms is still with me, and the Castro Mugen. Like, they're all, we're all still fighting. And that round, the Penswell Nismo actually didn't spin out in the final corner, so he's still kind of close to the Sard Supra as well. And that, that, that's pretty funny. 
honestly. It's just, it's not even a contest that the AI do this this way. Um, but it's because the Sard Supra is just a little bit more uh, rear, it seems like he's just a little bit more rear wheely, rear wheel drive-ish. He just seems like he slides the back part of his car out way more than the casual Tongs. So I think that's just kind of where that comes from. It's weird, because like, yeah, I mean, the Castro Tom Supra is catching up to the Mugen right now. Like, what is even going on with that? Usually the Mugen, the NSXs on this round are just like doing their own thing. But right now, that is not what's going on. So, it's pretty funny. Pretty amusing stuff. Um, but we'll see what happens for the rest of the race. I probably won't talk for a while. I'll start talking again when their tires get worn. I'll cut out the boring parts. And then we'll I'll start commenting again when they start spinning all the time. Because they will. They will. Oh, they will. So, we'll be back. Alright, so we are back to it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed some of the little cuts there, some hilarious spins from Supras and Skylines, but again, not the Castrol. This has been a really weird one in that I feel like the Castrol Supra hasn't even done anything wrong, and usually he does at least one thing wrong by now, but he's been just trucking along, doing totally fine. Still within a close distance to me and the other NSX, so he's not doing a bad job at all. The Denzo, on the other hand, has been spinning a lot, and so the problem with that now is that, so his tires are wearing faster, even though I think they technically would wear at the same rate, because they're very similar cars. Maybe the Denzos would wear a little sooner, but the fact that his back tires are more red shows that he's kind of sliding around a lot more, and he's spinning a lot more, too. So that's all unfortunate for him. The Skylines are just hilarious, so I just like to kind of cut to them once in a while. But, yeah, the Sard is really losing control of his car and I think he's also going to pit sooner because I'm pretty sure the uh, Castrol Tom pits way later than the Sard only because the Castrol Toms isn't um, he isn't uh, spinning out like ever so that's part of it um, the locks of the Zexel and the uh, Penzo actually are pretty close to each other which is rare usually by this point the Penzo would be like a lap behind literally everybody because he spins out all the time but the Loctite's spitting out a lot too, which is kind of nice. So, um, but yeah, the Sar just got lapped by me, and he's about to get, he's almost, I mean, he's on the verge of getting lapped by the person he's in competition with, so that's kind of funny. But then there's a whole, this is a little bit of a silver lining for the Sar, is you never know. The Sar is going to pit sooner, and in this game, there isn't rubber banding, but there kind of is rubber banding, in that when you, when an AI pits the lap after they pit, they like, go super fast they wear their tires but they go really 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 fast so maybe that'll help the sard i can't remember what the places were i'm pretty sure the sard lost but like i think it'll still be interesting to kind of see what happens there um yeah these two are really close to each other which is really interesting the never really seen the loctite this close to the penzoil this late into the race that's what is surprising me but it really, the, the race changed when the uh, Supra, Castle Tom Supra just like body slammed the uh, Sard, or sorry, the uh, Loctite. And Loctite like did a whole nother like spin and a half, which was pretty crazy. Um, the Sard is tail sliding, I'm not really sure what happened there. I think he ran into a, uh, the other Skyline, so that's what that was. Yeah, he hit the other Skyline, so he recovered it, recovered it nicely. But let's see if he uh, spins out again. He's been spinning out a lot here. And there he goes. The NSX slid out but almost but made it through all these skylines are just spinning out all around the lock the sard the casual toms is you can tell that he's his tires wear so much more even he actually almost wears on the front a little bit more but here is the first looking like okay this is the first mistake the supra has made lap 14 the casual toms made a lap mistake and the sard made a mistake lap one so you can use the math on that one see who's doing worse but um still kind of funny to see that the uh 
uh, Castro Tom still did make a mistake. It's, I thought he wasn't going to. I kind of assumed that he was, you know, never going to. The Mugen is doing great. Um, he's destroying everybody now. Now that the Castro Tom's messed up, that really kind of sealed the deal. Uh, the Sard is, yeah, the Sard should pit now. He's probably not going to for another lap or two, which is hilarious because the AI in this game, like, don't realize that they're going to start losing control. And so he'll probably spin out about three or four more times before he's, he pits. We'll see about the uh, Castro Toms. I'm not really sure what he's going to do. But, like, I mean, that is a that is a bad spin right there by the Sard. Like, that's one of the least efficient ones where he just kind of keeps spinning around over and over and over again like that. So... He just lost time to the Zexile again, which is unfortunate. Let's see how the Casual Toms does on this turn. Pretty much the exact same thing he's always been doing. He just takes the turn well and does fine. Um, Denzo Sard, you know, makes the race interesting. So this is the thing. If you want a more fun race, put the Denzo in. Don't put the Castrol in because the Castrol doesn't make the race funny. So if you want an AI fail race, you're going to want a Sard in there. You're not going to want the Castrol Toms. I mean, he's starting to make mistakes now. Like, that's his second spin now. So he's not, like, perfect, but it's just way less interesting. The Sard has been making mistakes, like, since lap one, literally. So there's only been a select few laps where the Sard hasn't spun out. So that's what makes it more fun. So, like, I don't know. I, you know, my whole channel is based on AI fails. So I'm going to want the Sard in the race. But I acknowledge that the AI are not that fond of driving the Sard because they seem to really not know how to handle it. Um, I kind of want to see the NSX spin. I... I doubt it. I doubt the NSX will spin. But it'd be pretty cool if he does. I think he actually might be going into the pit either now or next lap. So we'll kind of see. We'll monitor how he does. But the Sard, the Sard is doing very hilarious right now. And I, I enjoy it. I enjoy watching him make mistakes. I enjoy the AI making mistakes. It's just a lot of good times. So we'll finish out the rest of this race and we'll see what goes on. So yeah, I'll just let it go.
Alrighty, so y'all got it. Um, definitely the uh, Castle Toms is the AI car of choice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a max speed test with each of those two cars, starting with the Castro Toms, and then we're from there going to uh, do a max speed test. You can see how fast they both go, how they do, you know, take your pick. I could do like a slower thing, but that's just like so much. So what I'm gonna do is just do a max speed test. You can kind of see the times, compare them yourselves too. And then from there, we'll see which one is the fastest. I'm gonna lean the SAR just cause I know the Castro Toms kind of slows down. So we'll see, but thank you all so much for watching. Enjoy the video, rest of the video, and I hope you all enjoyed. Peace.